question by yourself and I'll discuss it with you. See, make the graph first. I'll discuss each part one by one. Just make it first. This is the question. Okay, uh, look, so uh, if you look at this graph, this is V versus T, velocity versus time graph. So graph has been plotted. In the previous class, we had discussed every quantity with respect to, uh, without the variables, right? So here we'll be discussing with suitable variables. Now see, initially what is happening? See, slope of V versus T gives you acceleration. And the area is the area of V versus T, that is V cross T, gives you displacement. This I had told you when two quantities, these are getting divided. That gives you the slope of the quantity, right? Tan theta, which we calculate. And if both the quantities are getting multiplied, or if they are giving you the area. So if they are giving you the area, then they give the third quantity, which gets comes out of multiplication. So for area you multiply, for slope you divide, right? So velocity versus time. Displacement, we'll calculate. Displacement covered in 10 seconds. This is saying zero to two seconds. It initially increased. The acceleration increased to uh, increased because we can see this is uh, a slope, right? So we can calculate the acceleration of this. And acceleration is increasing to other parts. If we are just talking about this part, let's say this is A, this is B, C, D, this part becomes E, this part becomes F. If I'm talking about AB, AB is the graph of a constant slope. So it means acceleration within this part, AB remains constant, right? Velocity is increasing from zero to 10 meter per second. It is becoming constant from B point to C point, it is still at 10 meter per second. Then it is decreasing from C to point D, it is decreasing, velocity is decreasing and again reaching to zero. 
then from z six to eight seconds the velocity is again further decreasing and reaching minus 10 meter per second and then increase back to zero the total duration is 10 seconds so what is the displacement that is covered in this entire duration this is what we have to tell so displacement and acceleration displacement will be given by the area right displacement will be given by the area and slope will give you the acceleration so displacement covered in 10 seconds means total area that has been covered within this duration so can you notice this is a trapezium that has been formed if see this was drawn freehandedly by me so that's why this is not very straight it is actually straight this is a trapezium trapezium with height of trapezium and the parallel sides how do we write the uh, area of trapezium half base into the uh, half into sum of parallel sides multiplied by the height this is how we write the area of trapezium and how do we write this area of triangle the triangle that is present below how do we write the area of it we write it by half into base into height simply half into base into height so that is same for the triangle but one thing is different in displacement we will consider whatever quantities are negative. Like if we are talking about distance, the difference in the first and second part. First part is asking you the displacement covered in 10 seconds. Second part is asking you distance covered in 10 seconds. So in both the parts, the difference lies in displacement is the shortest path traveled, right? So how to calculate it graphically? You can calculate it graphically by taking the quantities which are positive as positive and taking the quantities which are negative and as negative. This is what is meant by displacement. And when we are calculating the distance, you have to calculate the entire quantity. You have to calculate it from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, E to F as positive. That is what is the difference. So answer to the first part. C, displacement will be area of trapezium minus the area of triangle. Why minus? Because velocity is negative. Area is below the x-axis. That's why we are considering it as negative. And when we are calculating distance, area of trapezium plus area of triangle, because distance won't be negative. That's why we will not consider the negative portion. And that's how you will get the total distance. So what is the area of trapezium half sum of parallel sides? So this part is how much? This is 4 minus 2. This is 2. And what is this? 6, right? 0 to 6. So this is 6. This is 2. Sum of parallel sides. And what is the height? Height is 10. So this area becomes half. Sum of parallel sides multiplied by height. Minus area of triangle is half. Base. This is the base. 10 minus 6 is 4. And again, height is 10. Height is actually minus 10. That's why we have, since we have already taken negative in our answer, I'm not re rewriting it. So this becomes, this becomes half base is four into height, half base into height. So this becomes uh, 80 divided by two minus 40 divided by two, which is 40 divided by two, that is, 20 meters. This is the displacement. Now for the distance, you have to actually add these quantities. So this becomes uh, 80 by 2. This was 40 plus 20. That becomes 60 meters. This is the difference. Now coming to the third last part, acceleration versus time graph. See acceleration, how to calculate the acceleration here. Acceleration is given by the slope. Slope is given by tan theta, which is V by T. So look, A1, what is velocity here? 10. What is time 2? 10 divided by 2, that becomes 5 meter per second square. This is the slope of the graph. Velocity divided by time, right? Velocity is 10 meter per second. Time is 2 seconds. So 10 by 2, that is 5 meter per second square. This is the acceleration one. Uh, Sara, can you tell me acceleration 2 here from B point to C point? What is the slope of the graph?
Yes, Sara. Hi. Uh, C. Is the speed changing? Here it was 10 minus 0. The speed isn't changing. From B, at B point the speed was 10 meter per second. At C point also the speed is 10 meter per second. The speed isn't changing. If the speed, see here the speed was, here it was 10 meter per second. Exactly at the same point, no, you are having the speed as 10 meter per second. So the speed isn't changing. When the speed doesn't change, it means acceleration is zero. Acceleration comes in your system when speed changes. So acceleration here is zero. Fine, the acceleration will be zero. Coming to A3, now this Sarah, you tell me. Five. Will it be five or minus five? Look, minus five. minus five, right? Because this is decreasing. So initially when we had taken this as five, it was initial point was zero, final point was 10. So 10 minus zero gave you 10 and 10 divided by gave you five. Now final point is zero. Final minus initial is minus 10 divided by 2 gives you minus 5. Clear? Yeah. So, since you have to abide by all the formulas which you have already studied, final minus initial do it always. Then only you will get the exact answer. So, good. This would be minus 5 meter per second square. From here to here, 6 to 8 seconds. Martin, what should be the acceleration for? 6 to 8 seconds. Hmm? The acceleration right? Final minus initial, do it divided by the time duration. What is the final velocity from six to eight seconds? What is the final velocity, Martin? Uh, one. Look at the graph. Look at the graph. This is rising to. Minus 10. Uh, so it's minus 10. I'm just asking for this duration. This is rising to minus 10. So final minus initial. Final velocity is minus 10. What is initial velocity? Zero. Six. So minus 10. And what is the time duration? Two. Two seconds. Six to eight seconds. This is still two seconds. So again, this will be minus five. A4 will also be minus 5 meter per second squared. Martin, you only complete. You tell me between A to uh, E to F, what should be acceleration 5? Final velocity. Um, minus 10. Minus 10 is what? Acceleration. Minus You're getting uh, acceleration is minus 5. Minus 10. Yeah. Velocity is also minus 10. Acceleration is also minus 10. But acceleration is velocity divided by time. If velocity is minus 10, time duration didn't you take? Yeah, two. two. Why aren't so you minus, doing it as final minus initial divided by time? Look so here, minus what 20. is the final time? Final time between E to F. Body has started moving from point E that was moving at minus 10 to F. So final point is zero. Final velocity is zero. What was the initial velocity here? Now initial velocity becomes minus 10. And what is the time duration? 10 minus 8. Right? This is how yeah. we consider. Final minus initial. Now, look at one thing. This is how you have to consider. But what are we doing? Isn't there one more minus? Again, the answer should be minus 5 only if we take it by this. One thing, class. When you are given no minus already in the formula. So, that minus also you have to consider. Understood? This is final minus initial is this. Initial is minus 10. 
right? So minus minus becomes plus, plus 10 divided by two gives you plus five meter per second square. Look here class, just look at this part from A to B. Body was rising from zero meter per second to 10 meter per second. Final is 10 for this point. Initial is zero. So 10 minus zero divided by time duration two gave you five. No change in velocity, acceleration zero. Again, velocity is decreasing from 10 to zero. This is changing. Initially, the velocity is 10 meter per second. Now this is coming to two meter per second, right? So initially it was 10. Final minus initial you have to do. What is the final point? Zero. What is the initial velocity? 10. Zero minus 10 is negative. So you are getting minus five. Same thing here from zero, you are going to minus 10. So though it is actually rising, but since we are having negative in our problem, we are getting minus five. And this I have discussed because minus minus 10, that becomes plus. So you have acceleration. Nothing change in velocity divided by change in time. This is how you have to solve this question. This is how you will get the slope delta V by delta T is equal to acceleration. All right. Is it clear, Sara, Martin, others clear? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now you have to plot this in the graph. This wasn't asked in the question. Question didn't ask you to write and calculate all these accelerations. And why did we do it? Because the third part is asking you to calculate uh, to plot the graph, acceleration versus time. It means what is the maximum value of acceleration that is possible within this graph? It is five meter per second. What is the minimum value of acceleration means what is the negative value that is possible? Minus five meter per second square. Right, this is what we have seen. Either it was five, minus five or zero. All the time durations are mentioned. From zero to two, what was the acceleration from zero to two? Zero to two seconds, acceleration was five meter per second squared. Which type of graph is this? Remember on Saturday, we discussed graphs. And under that, we had studied this is a graph for constant slope where angle is not changing, tan theta is not changing, so slope won't change. So acceleration won't change. You are getting a constant slope, so constant acceleration is there. It means your acceleration is constant, that is 5 meter per second. This is still 2 seconds, clear? Now 2 to 4 seconds, what is the story that we have seen? There isn't any acceleration from 2 to 4 seconds, it is 0. So since there isn't any acceleration, it is accelerated. That is the slope is zero. This is zero. Four to six seconds. Four to six seconds acceleration is minus five. And again, this is also a constant slope. Constant slope and this is minus five. So acceleration would be minus five. This is for duration between four to six seconds. Coming to six to eight seconds. Again, this is same thing, decreasing minus five meter per second, same continuation of this. This will be an extension of this. Uh, till eight seconds we have completed and what about eight to 10 seconds? It is increasing, uh, no, it's constant, but magnitude of acceleration is plus five. So constant graph will be like this. This is for eight, this is for 10. These are the graphs that we have obtained. And since value of acceleration is constant everywhere, that's why we are getting this. Otherwise, there would have been an increasing or decreasing slope. That's why we had calculated acceleration everywhere from that graph. If we had not calculated acceleration, you wouldn't have got the magnitude, exactly how to plot in the graph. Noted down, some of you were late, note down the question then note down the solution of it. Then we'll start with vectors. Vectors is a part of your, uh, actually this is from your fundamental physics, but this comes under your chapter motion in a plane. Motion in a plane itself is a very short lesson, but because of inclusion of vectors, it becomes a little lengthy because vectors are very basics. Without vectors, you'll not be able to deal with any quantity further, especially in laws of motion. And anywhere, anywhere you'll not be able to deal with. So vectors are very important. That's why we'll start it today. 
noted down class. One second, ma'am. Could you scroll up? Okay, thank you.
done everyone yes If all have completed, can we start with the next lesson now? Yes, Done? Okay. See, uh, under this lesson, projectile motion, you initially have all the portions that are present of vectors. So, without vectors, vectors, you all know what are the basics of vectors, what is the meaning of vector. And constantly, I've been telling you, you'll have certain laws also which will help you define vectors so you have all these with you thing is that uh see calculation of vectors that were present no till your class 10th those were in one dimension that's why did you notice till now without even having the proper knowledge and proper knowing without knowing the laws of vectors we were able to solve all the questions because they were in one dimensions you will see you will see after you study parallelogram law you will understand why you were able to calculate it directly that was also through parallelogram law vectors can never be added directly the way uh, algebraic addition is done Fine. So vectors are what vectors we calculated in polar form and Cartesian form. Cartesian form we'll start initially because that is a little easier to understand. Polar form has all these addition of vectors. You can add vectors using parallelogram law, triangle law, polygon law. Everything is there. But before actually coming into the details of this, you should let us, we all should revise what is meant by a vector quantity. See, suppose if I write this, V is equal to minus 4 meter per second. Suppose I have written this, V is equal to minus 4 meter per second. So what is the meaning of every term in this? See, this velocity, when we were discussing the first lesson, first lesson in class 11, what did we study? Physical quantities. Remember, I had told you fundamental quantities are there, derived quantities are present. Uh, some of you had another class also of dimensions. There also we had seen fundamental and derived quantities. So velocity is also a physical quantity and we know it's a derived quantity because it is distance divided by time. So what is velocity that has been written? This is a physical quantity is equal to is a mathematical operation minus sign minus sign is not telling me how much negative is a velocity no what is velocity related with negative sign velocity is negative sign is actually telling me the direction remember we have studied relative velocity if i had taken left side as negative and my velocity is coming as minus four meter per second that means direction of velocity is towards left right direction of velocity is towards left this is how we relate with vectors and what is 4? 4 is just, if I take the number 4, if I ask you what is the magnitude here of the quantity, I'm not asking you anything else. I'm just asking you what is the velocity's magnitude. So you won't consider any sign at that time, whether it's positive, whether it's negative. Magnitude means the sole number only, the only number which is present. So what is the number present without any signs? This is 4. So this is actually its magnitude. This is its magnitude. And what is meter per second? We have also studied this is its SI unit, but let me focus it as unit because it could have been that it is written in a CGS unit. So it's the unit. This is how you break up your vector quantity. These are, these are very basic, so all of you must be knowing it. But see, calculation of vectors, magnitude is very easy. You all know it, how to calculate the direction, uh, how to calculate the magnitude. 
and we have formulas also through the, the those formulas you will be able to tell the magnitude but that is similar for the magnitude for vectors as well as for scalars how do we differentiate it we differentiate it by the direction so you have parallelogram law of addition to tell the magnitude and direction you have triangle law you have polygon law so we'll we'll not start with the laws first we'll do the basics first the basics of vectors in the next class i'll do parallelogram law with you because in your class 11th parallelograms law derivation can also be asked so i have to do the derivation with you otherwise after you learn parallelogram law then you don't need its derivation anywhere though in class 12th also wherever you have vector quantities you will be requiring a uh, parallelogram law or any other law which we have studied any other law but mostly parallelogram is used you will be requiring it but you won't need its derivation but in class 11th we all require the derivation so we'll do it in the next class first let us go through the basics just quickly note down these introductory points i'll uh, we'll discuss some more points and once you all are writing no like sara does this thing very good that she keeps on texting me done not done still doing and everything so it gives me an idea how much she has written so similarly you all also can do that because if sometimes it becomes very difficult to identify whether you have all written or not so you can keep on texting done or not Thank you, everyone.
Okay, class. So I think all of you have written, no, by now. Some other introductory points are also left. In between, you have this parallelogram law that I'll discuss it later on. Because uh, let us come to the basics first. So difference between the vector and scalar quantities which are present. See, vector quantities have magnitude. They have direction and they obey the vector laws. Vector laws we have not done. The laws which I was mentioning, like the parallelogram law, the polygon law, the triangle law, which laws, whichever laws you have. So all the vectors have to obey that. Even if they do not obey one of the quantities out of all these three, they'll not be considered as vectors. They'll be put under scalar quantities. And for scalar, you do not need any special laws to calculate. No separate vector laws, no separate scalar laws are present. What are scalar laws? Scalar laws are basically the algebraic laws. One plus one is two. When you are vectorically adding no two quantities, one plus one can be four. 1 plus 1 can be 8. 1 plus 1 can be 0 also. You will see by yourself. when two, Because angle comes in between. So angle changes the answer. There are various factors which change your answer. So it's not uh, definite. Like in algebra, you know 1 plus 1 will be 2 only. Right? You will calculate 1 plus 1 is 2. In every solution, you will find 1 plus 1 is 2. Right? For every quantity, you will find 1 plus 1 is 2. Speed is one. If you're adding one speed with another speed, that will give you the addition of, suppose one speed is one meter per second. Second speed is one meter per second. So total speed will be two meter per second. But if instead of speed, you're having velocity. So for velocity, this is not definite. For velocity, one meter per second plus one meter per, per second, it's not necessarily to be two. It can be two. It can be less than 2. It can be minus 2 also. It can be 0 also. It can be 4 also. So that's why we have these separate vector laws. right? So these are not like your algebraic laws. Uh, you have the various quantities like velocity, force, acceleration. These have been mentioned over here. Velocity, acceleration, displacement. These are all present here. Uh, scalar quantities are distance. Uh, then uh, Speed, mass, these are all the scalar quantities. Now, one thing which you have in class uh, 12 specifically, current. Current has direction. Current has magnitude. But still current is kept under scalar quantity. Can anyone tell me why? Current has direction. There is a particular direction for all the negative charges, positive charges. Direction is present. Still, it is considered under scalar quantity. Anyone? No idea? See, I'll tell you. It's actually that it doesn't obey these vector laws. You cannot uh, use and apply the vector laws for current. So despite having a particular direction for its positive and negative charges, we keep electric current under scalar quantities. This you will do in detail in class 12, but just for your knowledge, you should remember that just in case if a quantity like current comes and it has a direction. So should you put it under scalar or you should put it under vector quantities? So answer is under scalar quantities, only, not under vector quantities, despite having direction because it doesn't obey the vector law. So I am actually trying to tell you the importance of obeying the vector laws. All these three criteria, these are necessary for you to understand whether your quantity is scalar or vector. Now, in your textbooks, no, some books you will find that a vector which is written, some uh, if a vector is written, you will find, let's say this is a cap. Like this, you will find. In some books, you will see one cap is mentioned when it is written, wherever one this cap term is mentioned. Like this, just this a cap. That is actually a unit vector. Unit vector means what? Unit vector means the vector whose magnitude is 1. That is a vector. Unit vector. But we'll come to unit vectors again. Let me leave this unit vector part. We'll come to unit vectors again. Uh, yes, uh, one more thing I wanted to tell you was, in some books you will find that a vector, let's say this is a vector A, 
this is written like this. This is written like this. Somewhere you will find the vectors are written like this. So what is meant by it? This arrow on the head of a vector, this is depicting you the vector symbol. This is telling you that it's a vector quantity. That's why an arrow has been made. See, if I say this S is the symbol for distance and displacement, how will you tell me whether it's displacement or distance? Obviously, you will put an arrow. This means this is displacement. If you just have an S, this means this is distance. So we write this arrow for it. Or one more thing also, sometimes it can happen in some books, your reference books also, apart from your NCRT, if you search, you will see one vector is written like this. Everything is written in a font, uh, which is not bold, but one letter is with the vector or without the head, without the arrow, is made in bold. So if it is written in bold, that means boldness shows that it is a vector quantity. But usually this is written even if it's if it's a vector quantity, it is just written with the top of the arrow. That's it. Now, yes, suppose this is written force is equal to 2 Newton due east. Look, so force is what? This is a vector quantity. 2 is its magnitude. Newton is its SI unit. And due east, look, this is the extra term. The way we were having V is equal to minus 4 meter per second. Minus sign was telling its direction. Due east is also telling the direction. So this is how you completely write a vector quantity. Why am I repeating it twice? Because many students forget to mention the direction in vectors. So whenever you have force, you have the next lesson, no laws of motion. It is completely based upon force, friction, force, every force is present. So this portion, this is how you depict a vector. Head of the vector and the tail. This part is the tail of the vector and this part is the head of the vector. This is how you depict vectors. Now you have certain types of vectors. Equal vectors are also present. Unequal vectors are also present. What is meant by this? See, equal vector means when two vectors which are present have the same magnitude. They are known as equal vectors. Once one, you have see four things we'll study. Equal vectors, negative vectors, parallel vectors, and anti-parallel vectors. These are the four types of vectors which we have to study. These are under your basics only. So equal vector means what? Equal vector means when your vectors, these are equal in magnitude. That is equal in magnitude as well as in direction. For example, this is a force of 2 Newton. Right? And one more force is present, force of 2 Newton. So this is known, the, both the two forces are present. So these are two equal vectors. Then you have negative vectors. Negative vectors, the way we have studied V is equal to minus 4 meter per second. Force is equal to minus 5 Newton. These are all the negative vectors. But see, are they actually negative? These are because of the directions they are present. Directions. It can be that the magnitude is positive, but still they are negative vectors. How will you identify negative vectors? You identify these negative vectors with the help of proper sign, proper angle. Angles we'll do in detail, so these things will become clear. That's why I do not go into the details of it. Same thing, all equal vectors are parallel, but all parallel vectors may not be equal. Parallel vectors means when two vectors are present and the angle between the two vectors is zero. This is parallel vectors. An anti-parallel is if one, like one head is uh, pointing towards one side, uh, another head is pointing towards opposite side. Means angle between the vectors is 180 degree. These are just the basics of it. Right, so since cos 180 degrees minus one, right, cos 180 degrees minus one, that's why this is written over here that all negative vectors are anti parallel because cos 180 degree are negative minus one. But it's not necessary that all anti parallel may be negative. There, you will witness cases by yourself in the question when once we do the parallelogram law in the next class, you will see by yourself that negative vectors are present and it's not necessary that. 
they are anti parallel vectors are becoming negative because once you solve in the question once you put in the values in your answers you will notice that the answer is coming positive right so it's not necessary that it is exactly what we have studied so these are just basic introductory these won't be used anywhere specifically but you should know before starting with them note down these points then we will start with unit vectors first first we will do unit vectors because there you involve the cartesian system i cap j cap k cap all these get introduced and in the next class we will do parallelogram parallelogram now we will start in the next class What's the difference between the two vectors, the A, R, and the other one? Which one, Martin? I mean, the general notation vector represents. Uh, the second one, this is just written in bold. General notation and representation, it is actually. General notation and representation, this is written with an arrow, and, and another one is written in bold.
okay class now coming to unit vectors so what are unit vectors unit vectors are those vectors whose magnitude is one now what is again one thing magnitude i am again repeating when i am writing velocity is minus 4 meter per second its magnitude will always remain 4 only whether it's plus 4 or minus 4 if i write velocity is magnitude is plus 4 meters per second magnitude will be only this 4 you won't consider the sign See, if I give you force is equal to minus 0 0.3 Newton. Yes, uh, Siddhika, what is the magnitude of this force? All of you, not only Siddhika, rest of you while she is answering, all of you reply me in the chat column. What is the magnitude of this quantity? Force. I have written it. I want you all to mark and tell me what is the magnitude. All of you, Sara, Martin, Yasser, Abdullah. Siddhika, quickly reply me in the chat column. Sara is correct. Martin is also right. No, Abdullah. Why did you include this negative sign? Just now I've told you that you do not have to include the negative sign. Okay, this is what I was trying to tell you. Even though this is given as minus 0 0.3. See, this is the direction minus 0 0.3 this is just the magnitude you won't even include newton because newton is the si unit minus sign gives the direction force is the physical quantity what are we left with my 0 0.3 only no minus sign even if i write plus 0 0.3 you will tell the magnitude is 0 0.3 clear to all of you and others why only abdullah yeah. is responding others apart from martin yeah, uh, yes, someone is asking something. Okay. Uh, yes to you, uh, Yasser and Siddhika. This is clear, you know, the concept of magnitude and all. Because these will be repeated. Okay, very good. So, coming to now, the vectors that have the magnitude as one. Those we call as unit vectors. And unit vectors are very important for your Cartesian system. We will not be able to complete it today, but at least you can have a big idea of it, basic big idea of it. So suppose uh, wherever you see the symbol, no cap, this is common everywhere, which ever little, you, you will witness I cap, you will witness J cap, K cap. These you will st study. These are all of the unit vectors. If any vector has this cap symbol present, that depicts that this is a unit vector. See, see the difference class. A cap is the unit vector. And if the arrow is there, this is the complete vector, including the entire vector not just its magnitude of one. Fine, A is the vector. A cap is the unit vector. Suppose I write F cap is equal to one Newton due east. What is the magnitude? See, out of all this entire term, only one is the magnitude. So it's a unit vector. See this velocity. V cap is one meter per second along X axis. So one meter per second along X axis. This is the see the magnitude in both these cases this is one this is also one so all these are unit vectors and what is the formula class in the name of formula you just have to divide two quantities you know what is the vector a whole complete vector you will see questions so listen class through questions only this will actually get very clear but please pay attention to it then only you will be able to relate relate a cap, that is the unit vector, you will calculate it by taking the vector first and dividing it by magnitude. Whenever I put bars, modulus, all the students that have mathematics must know, if I write minus 4 with modulus, that means 4 only. Modulus, when you put the modulus sign, that is when you do not consider the negative that is you just consider the magnitude so if i put the modulus this means magnitude only so vector the entire vector this is what this is the unit vector this is the unit vector this is the complete vector quantity and this is the magnitude 
of the vector. This is the magnitude of vector. This is the formula only. By the name of formula, you just have to remember this. Wherever no, you see this symbol, this means suddenly magnitude comes. If I ask you what is, you will understand this is asking, what is the magnitude of this unit vector force? One. This is what is meant by it. Now, coming to a very basic quantity, after this, you will know all your basics of vectors and most of the cases you will be witnessing this see universal unit vectors some of the unit vectors are fixed with reference to the axes which are present like if i want to tell you what is the unit vector along x-axis i want to tell you the direction of forces along x-axis i will tell you the unit vector that is present along x-axis so i'll get the direction right so this part is becoming becoming easier right left up down along x-axis along negative x-axis y-axis z-axis right so you have these axes in your system x-axis one will be negative x-axis y-axis then you have negative y-axis z-axis negative z-axis all these are axes present majorly you have x y z axis and they have positive and negative part for always remember for your x axis the unit vector along x axis is i cap so plus i cap for positive x axis and minus i cap for negative x axis fine this is i cap you will be witnessing it a lot so wherever you have to tell force along x axis no need to write uh, like 5 newton force along x axis no 5 i cap that's it. Your answer is done. Right? Wherever you have to tell the direction along y-axis, upwards, that is along y-axis, write the unit vector. And what is the unit vector along y-axis? It's j cap. So for positive y-axis, you have plus j cap. For negative y-axis, you have minus j cap. Fine? j cap for y-axis. Lastly, for z-axis, you have k cap so plus k cap for positive z axis that is outwards whenever you have to write uh, something is moving outwards that is along positive z axis something that is moving backwards along negative z axis you write minus k cap now how to add these how to subtract these how to take their magnitude how to actually put it there uh, in their unit vectors how to calculate it no need to worry that you have it in your syllabus and we'll be studying it but make a heading as make the separate heading as unit vectors write down all these points first
Now I'm going to go back up. Yeah, I'm going to go back down. Uh, see, one just small thing that I want to discuss, then rest of the calculations part, we'll do it in the next class only. So your after class assessment also, we also will be based upon this uh, in the next class. Today, in today's class, you will uh, your after class assessment of graphs and 
relative velocity is left. No? So that will be conducted today. Uh, now look class, this just component part I want to tell you. The vectors aren't written with just I cap, J cap. Suppose you'll have force. Force is equal to 2I cap plus 3J cap plus 4K cap. This is how the entire in Cartesian form you have the vectors written. So it means the component along X axis because I cap is always, I have told you, no, I cap is depicting the X axis direction along X axis. So direction along X axis, that is I cap. The component is 2. So this is what has been written as A1, A1 I cap like this. Similarly, this is A2 J cap. Similarly, A3 K cap. So component along X axis is written as A1, component along Y axis as A2, and component along Z axis as A3. Now we'll be actually adding, subtracting these. Now, how to add them, how to subtract them, multiply, divide, that we will see in the next class. But first, note it down. Text me done in the chat column. Fine. So, uh, like Sarah has completed, all those who have completed, kindly log into your accounts, the LearnEvio portal app, which you have in your phone. Martin also, all those who are completing, please start with it. Please start with, uh, with the after class assessment. It, it is on the, from the last topic, relative velocity and graphs. So we have just discussed, just discussed it. So in today's class only we had discussed. So you will be able to manage it. Martin and Sarah have completed. What about mm -hmm. others? Still writing. I would say draft the placement, right? Uh, Yasir and Siddhika. Is... Have started. You have started it, Sarah. 